First of all, I wanted to. No more. First of all, I wanted to uh, explain what we do and then maybe cover the topic of the healthcare disruption. So we're, uh, Give Vision is a human augmentation company. We believe that technology can augment our abilities, physical abilities, mental abilities, ability to process information and just, just be superhumans, like an Iron Man idea. I used Iron Man photo before, but then the, the Hollywood kind of contacted us and they wanted to sue us for infringement rights, so I had to come up with this. But you get the idea. The problem we're solving now is blindness. So this is the one of the organs that if you lose your sight, you're, 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 you know, it's pretty difficult life. You're very, you lose your independence, your, your lights, it's, it's a no-brainer. So we decided to first tackle the issue of blindness and can we augment sight? Could we design something, a technology that would allow you to get the right information at the right time so you, know, you can be more effective and just live a more fulfilling life? Um, the problem also of being blind is not just that you're, you're lacking information, but also existing tools are very limited and they haven't progressed in the last 25 years. They're basically magnifying loops, it's, it's the sort of the CCTV magnifiers or a white cane. It's that simple. And, having, and we were really, we were, it was bizarre that, that we still have been blind in the man on the moon and we couldn't come up with something for a blind person to get around. And when I talk blind, be wary that 95% of people who are called blind actually have some sight remaining. It's just their sight is so poor, it's useless for them. This is why they need these big magnifying glasses. Only 5% are like pitch dark black, d blind. And so we decided, well, why don't we just use some wearable technology and perhaps build a, um, a tool that would maybe scan your environment and sort of tell you what's around you, identify bus numbers, the local shops, take it to places, perhaps help you to navigate the big cities that you haven't been before and even maybe read, identify products, read some texts. That was the original idea. But also, once we realized majority of people not blind, they told us, you know, I don't want to just listen to information, I would like to see. So we came up with this concept, okay, why don't we maybe use smart glasses that would have screens inside, and this is not something that we build, this is already exists, and perhaps try to augment the sight for the person that, that maybe have only peripheral vision or retinal vision, can we augment what they actually see? And, and a perfect example of that, this is how you use traditional magnifiers on the left, and how limited is that, and this is someone wearing a pair of shades that could sort of like augment your vision and you can not only start reading, but you can look at people's faces, you can, you can look, you know, watch TV, walk around, just really see again. Uh, this is a little video. Um, so I can just talk you through, oh, so who is this great company, Give Vision? Would you like to try it on? Uh, this is this great glasses that can talk for you and uh, then we have two blind people, one is completely blind, the other one is partially sighted and zoom back out again so that I can find where I am on the page. Um, and with this device I can also point to a certain section of the text um, and the glasses will, will identify that and um, um, magnify that. Mm. This is just one lovely piece of tech that goes around your eyes and that's it. Yeah, one lovely piece of equipment is all in one, basically. One-stop shop, basically, anyway. Uh, yeah, anyway, one-stop shop. It's, it's, let's not, you know, we've got limited time, a lot to cover, but the idea is it's a working product that we're already shipping. We're a small team, six uh, team members, including our guide dog Mercer. One of our engineers is blind. This is Arturo Ortega. He's our head of architecture. He's also the CTO of The Economist and recently the CTO of The, uh, the Telegraph, which is a massive tabloid companies. So you don't have to be cited to be a technical engineer. Um, and we've run over 300 user trials already within the UK. We've been accepted to Wira, Telefonica, Hokkaido. Oh, Gary, where are you? Where's Gary? Gary went to sleep. Gary, what the? Anyway, so the gentleman that was with us here from Wira, so they invested originally in our concept. Um, and then we just in February early, we raised our um, C round with uh, partially UK government and, and part funded by Roman Abramovich, the owner of Chelsea. So, um, you know what they say about the slide 11, people lose interest? Uh, Rupert, where is Rupert? Rupert's here? Rupert's gone. Rupert? Hey, where is it? He's gone? Okay, Rupert's gone. Whatever. So I thought maybe let's do some bit of activity to wake you up since you're already bored and you lost interest. So I wanted to do an experiment that would probably demonstrate why is it so important when we talk about healthcare innovation. And um, so the first question, if I'd like to, if you could raise your hand if you're under 30. It looks
look around you. This is interesting. Excuse me, you're over 30? You certainly don't look that. So uh, do, uh, raise your hand if you're under 30, and you're definitely under 30. Or you look under 30. Raise your hand as well. <laughs> OK. All right, OK. Now, second thing. Keep your hands up if your parents, when they had you, they were under 32. So if you have like a 25-year difference with your parents. OK, so almost everybody, right? OK, that's cool. Now, out of all the people who are here who still have their uh, Just keep your hands. Just a second. Come on. This is a little bit of activity. I want to ask you to dance around. Now, could someone stand up from everyone who's having hands up if you have a child? All right, are you afraid? Okay, so one, two, okay, a few, uh, just a handful of, let's give them a round of applause to these courageous young people that have a baby today. But if you compare this handful with abundance of hands we had of all the kids whose parents had them when they were 18, 19, 22, you will understand why this is so important, what's the, what is the actual, out, what's the implication of this? The world has changed massively, and we are living in a period where we have a massive growth of aging population. <sighs> Essentially, not only older people are living longer, which was not the case before, but also because we have fewer babies, it just general proportion of population, old versus young, is changing rapidly. And the face of the earth, not just like, oh, some old people in old houses, but also the your employees, the average age of the employee, would be older every year. And this is a massive trend. Why this is important? Because if we have this pro pro con continuous progression of aging population, it means that more and more money needs to be spent on healthcare, which is one of the major budgets around the world, especially in countries of former Soviet Union where the government pays for it. Now, this is just up to 2008. This is not even current. This is just a found this morning. But the, the point is this. If this continues, there's a couple of options we have. One, option number one, we would just keep taxing the poor young people. There's a kid who was sleeping this morning in the corner right there. I don't know, he must have escaped. Um, and um, so you're, you're, those few, uh, few kids that are there, they have a massive burden of paying for all of us here for our retirement. Option two, we will slash the services and just reduce the budgets. So we're going to have even shittier public service or healthcare service than we have already. And it's not great, let's face it. Or we need something else. Healthcare disruption innovation. And this is the kind of the conversation we were wanted to talk to you today about. Perhaps this is time when we can innovate our, ourselves out of this issue. We can innovate ourselves out of the huge spending for NHS by maybe making things more just perhaps the, at least the process more efficient. These are notes not for you, this is for me, because I'm going to forget what I'm going to speak about. So uh, my point was like, perhaps, I don't know if it's changed a lot, but it, this must be more efficient way than just going to hospital, wait in the queue for long, just to see a professional so he can give you a prescription, you can go and buy your pills. That must be more effective way of, than doing that. Maybe we can automate some processes uh, within the healthcare. Maybe um, maybe we can offer remote care. And independent living was a big thing for give vision because now blind people don't need carers to take them by hand to go anywhere they need to go. The glasses can sort of guide them. And even if it's not the glasses, we can remotely connect them to the assistant who will help them. And that saves a lot of time for both their families and strain on the public services. Perhaps we could use the devices that already exist to help people to identify to really the diseases early and maybe help prevent the complications. Did you know that the most, the most expense we face is when we mismanage chronic diseases like diabetes complications? Those are simple things that can be helped managed by wearable technology already today. And I guess the thing I wanted to make was a lot of people think, well, healthcare is, I'm, I'm, I'm not a biomedical, I'm not a doctor, I don't know how to do this. But it's not necessarily a rocket science. This is one of my favorite ideas from Peter Drucker's Innovation Entrepreneurship that it takes 25 years from inventing something to putting it to market. So it doesn't have to be a new technology. You can look around you what is available today and see if you can apply it to improve perhaps a process or sort of the things have done in healthcare. For example, with GiveVision, we didn't invent any hardware, the hardware already existing, the smart glasses, technology to identify letters and identify products, this already was there, it was just never applied for this issue. Um, uh, uh, 
in, in the way to think about this, if I may give a piece of advice here, if you are not thinking, you don't have, don't have an idea, what is useful to think about technology is like, if you have a Lego, anyone played Lego in, in their childhood? I love Lego. I was playing since I was four, and I, finished, I still play Lego. The thing with Lego, before you know what you can build, you need to know your pieces. So you put all the blocks on the floor, and, and you select the nice pieces you want to build, and then you have an idea. You never want, I'm going to build something. So same with technology. If you understand what technologies are available, today, without you needing to start something from scratch, you'll have an idea of what's possible. So give yourself a favor, even if you're not a technical engineer, maybe you're not a software guy, maybe you've never even been, you, know, you can barely use word processor on the computer, give yourself a favor, go visit IBM Bluemix. There's thousands of APIs of this IBM Watson machine that can do so many things for you for free or literally almost for free. Go and visit we have Microsoft, BizSpark, they have already API, APIs like a it's simply put, a thing that can do things for you by you inserting a small line of code. That's what it does. With all the technologies they're giving you for free, please use this. There's a cloud that can do lots of things for you and try to put these, these, these things together, these pieces together. Yeah? Yes. And one thing, a really important takeaway, and I didn't want to make it political in any way, but don't expect the government, and this goes for UK as well, don't expect the government to fix it for you. And this is a good thing. The state cannot take risks. It's the same story with NHS in the United Kingdom. The state is, has this responsibility for people, and if something working, or at least not broken, they're not going to fix it. They can't afford to take risks. But you guys here, you can try and pilot things on a small scale, bring into them the results and show, listen, we've been giving it to blind people for two years, and we have reduced admissions to NHS. Start paying for it, integrate it to your system. And that's how innovation is pushed upwards. I was, um, yeah, five minutes. I'm going to save you lots of time, so I really rush through this thing. I, um, th um, th there was a there was an interview we, we've done with uh, uh, before coming here where they asked me some questions what we do and they pushed them to buy and what we think. My friends called me from Belarus. Hey, check out the comments. They were you guys can check it as well. Um, if you go to the article on to buy, there's about 60 comments. Some cool stuff was going on that really entertained me, but also brought me to some thinking. So there was for those of you who don't speak, so can't read Russian, this something about oh this immigrant, yeah, he stole the technology from Belarus and moved it to the West, and now he's like a traitor. He's sort of, you know, like he betrayed the country. I don't know. So it was really cool. And those people saying like most of the like uh, most of the TVs in the US looked like Soviet TVs because maybe they were invented there. I don't know. But the point is this: technology is a global thing. It's a product you can export, right? So if you invent something today, this can become a new export for this beautiful country that I love so much. There's some ideas that might only work within UK, uh, Belarus, so that you might not export them, but you already have stuff that you export that you might actually not that great at, but technology you can export. And this perhaps, with the abundance of talent that lives in Minsk and in Belarus in general, you can really become another startup nation like Israel, which is, as, as in the previous, uh, or, or, Ugis, right? Ugis. Ugis, right. So the Ugis was talking about where you can really create a global product, something that can be served elsewhere. And I think if you can optimize healthcare and some disruptions in, in, in health ecosystem, that can be applied anywhere in the world. The model is pretty much the same. Thank you so much. You can follow us at givevision.net. Any questions, I'll be here the rest of the day. Thank you so much for having us.